In this program, I'm going to demonstrate some very simple void functions. A void function is a function that contains a little section of code that from our main program or actually from a different function, we can jump out, execute. Um, so it can just perform a simple task and then return to where that function was called. So let's just start with a really simple uh, void function and it's going to display a heading information. So you can see here I'm just asking the user to enter uh, two integers x and y and then I'm just going to display a heading to this screen that says uh, let's say function practice. So if we were going to put this in our main program of course we could just do this. But what we want to do in this example is instead of putting it in main we're just going to put it in a function. Okay so I'm going to come down here and the function is going to look like this. Void we want to give um, at this point we're only talking about void functions so they'll start with the word void um, and then the name of this I'll just call uh, display heading so I want to give it uh, a meaningful name has to follow all the rules of identifiers right it's got to start with a letter or underscore um, can't contain any special characters uh, can be made up of letters numbers and underscores so. though there's no information this is called our parameter list where we'll take information from main and pass it to this function we don't need any information here so we'll just have the empty uh, parentheses denoting that we're not going to have any parameters and I'm just going to put my C out station oh, sorry my C out right here in this function um, okay so now this is you know separate little sub program anytime you have a function it requires a prototype so a prototype is just the declaration of the function the same way that we declare variables when we use them we have to declare functions um, so the easiest thing to do is just copy the heading of the function the first line of the function um, and paste it up at the top of your program and you put a semicolon after it so the heading of the function and the prototype of the function should match except the prototype requires that you have a semicolon here all right so if I run my program now you'll see the function won't execute right I'm over here I'm going to enter X I'll put 4 Y is 5 nothing happens um, because in our main program remember when the program when you hit run it starts executing the main program there's nothing in this main program telling us um, that we need to execute what's in the function so that requires a call to the function and so that's what I'm going to add next a function call is just the name of the function Sorry. and then in parentheses you put any um, parameters or arguments information that you're going to send from main to the function but we don't have anything we're sending this just a little see out statement here so this argument or parameter list is empty but this will call the function so it'll ask the user to enter X it'll read it in enter Y read it in this is a function called display heading will jump out it'll execute this function at the closing curly brace it'll come right back to here in the program and continue on with the rest of the program I just don't have anything else out there yet but let's run this so I'm going to enter X I'll just use these numbers again four five and now you'll see it did jump out and it executed function practice there's really three parts there's the function definition itself which contains the heading it's the first line and the body everything that's inside the curly braces then you have to have a prototype where your function is declared and then if you want the function to execute you have to have a function call and that's what I have here okay in our next example um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to pass information from the main program to a function so I'm going to write a new function and um, what I want to do here is I wanted to display the values of X and Y to the screen All right so I'll display the heading then I'll display the values of X and Y now I could have a C out statement here that just did that but in this case we are practicing functions so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write this function I'll call it display XY 
You have to have a parameter list. I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, opening, closing, curly brace. And this is going to see out uh, x is. Then I'll display the value of x. Uh, and y is, and I'll display the value of y. So I'm just displaying out what x and y are. Now you'll notice here I get these little red squiggly lines telling me there's a problem, undeclared identifier x. That's because this is a whole separate subprogram, right? You could say, well, I declared x and y up here in main. Well, that's fine, but that only has meaning in main. So they have to be declared inside of here, um, inside of this function. But really, we want to take the x and y from our main program, and we want to send them to the function. So what we're going to do is we're going to add two parameters, x and y right here. Now, this will declare x and y, so you'll see the red squiggly lines go away. Okay. And it'll also allow us to pass them from the main program. So I'm going to copy this, and up at the top, I'm going to put the prototype. Right, I just copied the heading, pasted it, and put a semicolon. Um, and just so you know, like the order up here in this section of the program, the prototype doesn't really matter. Um, I kind of like to do it in the order in which I call the functions. So now I'm going to call my function. Now this requires two parameters, or sometimes in the main program or the calling program, they're called arguments. A lot of times that's used interchangeably. But you could see what pops up here is a message. It's saying, hey, you've got X and Y. That's what's going in. And some students like to just type what they see here. That's not a good idea. This is just telling you what the heading looks like. So I'm going to pass in X and Y. Okay. So this is going to take whatever stored in X, it's going to pass it into the first parameter. Now it's going to be stored in memory here, and it'll display, and then it's going to take whatever's in Y right here, and it's going to pass it out to here. So now we're going to display the heading, and then we're going to call this function. So I'm going to run this, and I'm going to put in 4, and I'll put in 5 for Y, and now you'll see X is 4. Oh, first you'll see function practice, right? That's my heading that displayed. And then this is going to call this function. It's going to pass it the values that I put in, which are 4 and 5. And now it's going to display X is 4 and Y is 5. All right, so um, what's important to note here is the only way to get information from the main program to a function is by passing it in this parameter or argument list, right? So if I have X and Y in main and I need them in that function, they have to go in the parameter list. Order is important, okay? If I do this, some students might say, well, they're called X and Y, so it knows what to do, but what happens, and when I run it, if I put in four for X and five for Y, you'll see x is 5 and y is 4. Because all it did was it takes the value that I stored in y right here, which was 5, and it passes it into the first parameter. So it has to do with the order of the parameters, not the name of the parameters. So you have to be very careful that you're doing things in the correct order. So when I store 4 for x, that 4, gets passed out to here. When I store 5 and y, it's the second parameter, the 5, that gets passed out to here. So now it should run correctly. All right. Now, um, the benefit in this program to using functions is I'm kind of breaking my program down into small, easy to solve pieces. Um, you might not think it's that easy because I take a very simple program and just have you added a lot more syntax to it, but programs are written with functions. That's how they're written. 
um, because programs are hundreds of thousands of lines of code and you just can't pile those all into main, right? You have to break it down into smaller, easier to solve pieces. The other benefit is, um, you know, if you have to call a function more than once, you could do that. So let me show you this example. I'll call this again. Um, and, you know, I could, let's say I do this. Uh, uh, A is one and B is two. So I'm just not getting that from the user. And then I pass A and B to this function. Well, we know A is one. That's going to get passed here into the X and B is two. That's going to get passed here into the Y. And this should say X is one and Y is two. The second time this function gets executed. Oops. So you'll see over here. So the first time when it calls it with the four and the five, we get X is four and Y is five. And the second time when it calls it with one and two, we get X is one and Y is two. So it doesn't really have to do with the names of the variables. Um, a lot of times when you call a function once, let me just go back to my original, we can use the same names just because it makes it easier for us, right? X in our ha head kind of, you know, we know we entered four here and it makes sense to call this X and Y here. Right, same thing here, but um, these are really just, you know, placeholders where it passes the first into the first, the second into the second. Uh, and even with these types of functions, we can even do something like this. We don't need to use variables. This also works. Right, because you'll see the second call pass the one into the X and the two into the Y. So these are what are referred to as value parameters. Um, and it just takes the value of this and it passes it into the first one. And the value of this and it passes it into the second one. So again, the names in here have to be consistent throughout, right? If you call your first parameter X, you're gonna be using X down here and Y and Y down here, all right? Okay, just a few other things. You have to be really careful, like things like this don't work. Right, let's see what message we get. No matching function call to display X, Y. And that's because display x, y has two parameters and here there's only one. So you just have to be sure when you're calling the functions, you have to make sure you're using the correct name and the correct number of parameters or up here, the correct number of arguments. The other thing that's tricky for students is in the call, you don't put the word void in the call, just the function name. And you don't put the data types in here, right? In the heading here, we have data types, but not in the call. In the main program, we already know that X and Y are integers, okay? So you don't wanna put int in front of either of these. That's why functions are a little tricky. There's a lot of syntax rules to remember. So as we introduce these in this module, we're gonna try and just do simple things. We're gonna try and keep the names of things the same in main as it is in the function. It's fine to do that, right? We're calling it X and Y in main, and then we're gonna call it X and Y in the functions just because it's a little easier for us to keep track of.